Evening, I'm calling the public meeting of April 19th back to order. Roll call, please. Trustee Amboy. Present. Trustee Flores. Present. Trustee Fox. Present. Vice President Young. Present. President Gardner. Present. Trustee Taylor is absent. Okay, if we could stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, a report of actions taken in closed session on item 2A, conference with legal counsel. Um, it was a unanimous vote. The board voted to approve the settlement proposal resolving all claims in special ed dispute case number 202-302-0685. In item three or two A or two B, um, there was information um, received and guidance given. On item two C, um, no new information was reported at this time. And then item three A, there was a readmit for student number S two. 023-RA03. I'd like a motion. This was to readmit student. Uh, Trustee Fox. I'd like to re uh, make a motion to readmit the student number you stated. And Trustee Ampoy. I second. A roll call, please. Trustee Amboy. Aye. Trustee Flores. Aye. Trustee Fox. Aye. Vice President Young. Aye. And President Gardner? Aye. We also heard a case to expel student number S2023-APH05. I need a motion to expel. Trustee Fox? I'd like to make a motion to expel the stated student number. Trustee Young? I second. Roll call, please. Trustee Amboy? Aye. Trustee Flores? Aye. Trustee Fox? Aye. Vice President Young? Aye. And President Gardner? Aye. Okay, moving on. Let's, I need a motion to adopt our board agenda. Trustee Fox? I'd like to make a motion to adopt our board agenda as is. And Trustee Amboy. I second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the agenda. Roll call, please. Trustee Amboy. Aye. Trustee Flores. Aye. Trustee Fox. Aye. Vice President Young. Aye. President Gardner. Aye. Trustee Taylor. No, aye. Okay, motion passed. So six, we're down to presentations, community acknowledgements, and recognitions. And right now we're going to honor our first classified employee that was honored by the San Francisco 49ers Foundation, Hassani Kraft. Would you like to set this up, Superintendent Spalding? I'll start it up and I will probably ask uh, Dr. Palmer to assist me with this, um, talk a little bit about Mr. Kraft and all his great work at, at Mini Elementary. So the, the 49ers have been honoring uh, an educator of the year, and I, I know this last year they did it um, at the last home game of the season, and I think that's when they typically do it. It's a Cardinals game, right? Was it? Yeah. We always played the Cardinals at the end, I think. Um, <clears throat> so so they, um, they honored him for, you know, he's nominated, and they nominated, for, they, they nominated for all his work, the great work he's done at, at many. Um, he's as lead custodian, and I think the thing that's probably um, even more impressive is that he's the first classified, do I have that right? The first classified uh, employee to be honored as educator of the year by the San Francisco 49ers um, organization. 
So we have some pictures up here with him on the sidelines. He will come in with his family. Um, he was able to participate and, uh, you know, be honored in, you know, in a crowded stadium. And um, if I remember correctly, at that point, I think things were looking a little better for us like, towards playoffs. And, they, you know, and the last big crowd, I think, um, next year. Um, but anyways, wanted to just make sure that we honored this. And sorry, we're a couple months late, but we wanted to make sure that we, you know, we uh, send our, grad, uh, our gratitude to you. We have a, a, we have a, a certificate, but one of our board members is at a distance today. So his signature is not there yet. So I will hand it to you, then I will take it back, get his signature, and give it to you. Dr. Palmer, do you have some things that you wanted to add? Please. Thank you for this opportunity. I would like to say that uh, since I've been here uh, at Dan Mini Elementary School, I have really had the opportunity to observe Mr. Hassani just really demonstrate community, demonstrate love and compassion towards all of our students and staff. And his dedication to what he does, he's a servant leader, but also a transformational leader because he gets everybody involved in the process when it comes to really caring about our kids and our school community. So this is a perfect time to honor him and just to let him know how much I appreciate him as a principal. And also you can see the support that you have here from your whole entire staff, your staff, <laughs> and the school community and uh, VCUSD. So I wanna say thank you so much for being such a great example and a great mo role model for our students and for our community. Um, I just want to say I really appreciate it. Um, I'm not one for really attention. I just do what I do. And so um, this is really humbling. And I thank you all for, for recognizing me. It, it, I appreciate being appreciated, if that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, congratulations. This just goes to show that it does take a village to raise a child, and all school employees are included in that village. Dr. Young. How did it feel to have everybody looking at you <laughs> in a sea of red? Were you speechless? Yes, I was. I know, Absolutely. and that's unusual for you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're down to, this is actually my favorite part of the whole agenda, the presentations piece. Um, but the school presentation is actually one of my favorites as well. So Vallejo Adult School is here to present about all of the wonderful things that she has for the adult community. I'll give a quick introduction to Principal Laura Dutch. Um, so uh, Vallejo Adult School is, is, is kind of getting um, a little bit of a victory lap right now, uh, just coming off of WASC. And um, that looks, I think, we don't know the term yet, but, I, but they were very, very favorable about the many great programs that are going on and just the, the teachers and the work that's done and what a promise it is to this community that we never finish up with anybody. You, you, you can access our schools, the adult school, at any age, and lots and lots of folks are changing their lives by, by going to Vallejo Adult School, and that was really cool. This week, uh, this weekend, we will see uh, a, an event that um, renames the school back to the Vallejo Adult School from VREC and as the Al Berenger Center, um, but as the Vallejo Adult School at the Al Berenger Center. So I, I thought it was um, really fitting that uh, you you all would be um, presenting tonight because we're, we're finally getting some... Um, you're, you're finally getting some recognition. You should, I mean, recognition we probably should have been giving you a long time ago and getting some recognition now, which I really think is terrific. 
Thank you for that. Um, it's my pleasure to be here this evening and share some things tonight about our school. We have a wonderful school. We have a wonderful staff. And there's a lot of great things happening there. So I'm happy to, for us to be able to share it tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to Mary, one of our teachers. Good evening. My name is Mary Bustamante. I'm a proud to be a teacher at Vallejo Adult School at Al Berenger Educational Center. It is my pleasure this evening to tell you about this amazing school. In the United States, we have 1.2 million students attending adult education classes. They have a lot in common with the students at our adult school. They are resilient, motivated, and want to improve their future. These students need a skill-based program in a warm and caring environment. Teachers need to take these students from where their skills are and help them thrive. We are proud that at Vallejo Adult School, that is exactly what we do. Our school is year round. Each class is 10 weeks and students can enroll at any time. We have morning, afternoon and evening classes. We have several programs at our school and you can look at these. This is why we need adult education. The first program we have at our school is adult basic education. This is for students who lack basic math and reading skills. There are two ways students can finish high school. One is to take the high set test, which is a high school equivalency test. We have classes to help students achieve this goal, including a class that is in Spanish. And here's a quote from one of our students. Students can also complete the class units to earn a high school diploma. Both of these programs allow students to open their future possibilities in the job market. Having a high school diploma also shows their children the importance of school. This is a quote by Isabella. I teach in the English as a Second Language program. Almost two thirds of our school are ESL students. I currently have students from Mexico, Poland, Turkey, China, Vietnam, El Salvador, and Guatemala in my beginning literacy class. We have three, excuse me, four different levels of ESL classes. After students finish the highest class, some continue taking classes at our school, while others go to the community college. We have classes both in person and on Zoom. As part of our ESL program, we also offer citizenship classes as well as conversation classes. Students come back and talk about passing the citizenship oral and written test. Please read what Yuruki said. Students in the construction apprenticeship classes also tell everyone about reaching their goals. The gentleman in the picture passed the test to be an elevator engineer. This class at the adult school helps students improve their math skills and helps them prepare for the apprenticeship entry tests. 
We also have other career tech classes, including computer classes and intro to the culinary arts. We are fortunate to have many services that help students attend school. Free daycare for students, a wellness center, and a food bank are all hosted at the school. I want to thank the board for coming to the end of the WASC accreditation and hearing the report from our accreditation team. We are very proud of our school. Now I would like to ask the school board and everyone in this room to spread the word. Tell everyone about the Vallejo Adult School at the Al Berenger Educational Center. This is an amazing school. We want to let everyone know that they can continue their education right here in Vallejo. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Does anyone have questions? Yeah. I, Carlos. Trustee Flores. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, this isn't so much a question. This is just, um, want to just give my uh, congratulations and my, and just express my admiration for what uh, you do, Ms. Dutch. For those of you that probably don't know, I'm actually an alumni of the Vallejo Adult School. Uh, probably over 10 years ago, give or take, I went through their medical front office program. And although that part of it didn't work out for me, I just know that the, the, the course itself, Ms. Dutch was actually my teacher and it, and it was a very well thought out, very well crafted program. Um, to this day, I can still probably find diagnosis in the, in the book. So um, I just want to say that if the success of, of the adult school is being uh, shown. It's just a reflection of the leadership. So again, congratulations, and it's great to see you, Ms. Dutch. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Fox. I wanted to thank you for your presentation, and I agree 100% that this is a gem that we do need to talk about and get the information out so that our citizens in Vallejo know that it's available. Um, it's an avenue for success for their future. Um, so thank you very much for being here tonight and for pre um, presenting. And I also want to um, say sorry for your loss with the co-member Barbara thank recently. Thank you. Thank you for that. Trustee Young. I would just like to say um, congratulations to the staff and to the principal and to the students that the that go to that school, that is a well-kept secret. And it's our responsibility as a community to make sure everybody knows about it. Scream to the rafters if necessary. Because that, that environment um, is always conducive to whatever you might need. Loving support staff there. Um, I had an opportunity years and years ago, I won't even date the date, but anyway, to be a part of the reconstruction of that school. So thank you for carrying it through the vision that you and I, Laura, sat down and talked about. And the accreditation, I was just, oh my God, look at this. They had a wonderful accreditation and I was so proud to be sitting there as a board member. Thank you to all of you guys. Thank you, Dr. Young. I just want to reiterate what they said. You guys are doing <laughs> such a great job. But I also overheard you say at a recent event that people down in Los Angeles were envious of the adult program here. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, I had an opportunity to go to the CCAE, California Council for Adult Education, uh, 
annual conference, and it was in Oakland this year, and I had the opportunity to present on our trades program, and most of the people in the audience were from Southern California, and they were envious, and they had a lot of really good questions, and they want to come visit because they really want to copy what we're doing, which is great. It's great. It's a needed program, so it's exciting that somebody sees the value in it from the South. Yes, we'll spread the word down there, too. Okay. And Mr. Spalding would like to mention something. And Laura <clears throat> is a very humble person and, and never toots her own horn, but so I'm going to toot it for her. That uh, last Saturday night, she was also honored by the Napa Solano Central Labor Council um, with an award for the work that she's done and the school has done um, on the trades and, and connecting into the construction industry. And they have their eyes on our, our community, uh, you know, feeling that um, this is an area that we are growing in and continue to grow in. And, and, and there's a lot of movement now in the trades. But a lot of that, Laura, is due to your work and the work of your, your team um, in, in starting to do all this work with the trades and, and getting people placed in these great, you know, these jobs that are good, solid, high-paying jobs. And so um, you were also uh, honored um, there in the ruins, the, on, the ruins. On, on the ruins on Saturday night. So, and I, but I was really proud uh, to be there with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thanks. Okay, next we're going to adopt the resolution number 4000, declaring April 22nd, 2023 as Adolf Al Berenger Day. Mr. Spaulding, would you like to read that resolution, please? Absolutely, I might need to open a bottle of water. Um, Velo City Unified School District, resolution number 4000, declaring Saturday, April 22nd, 2023 as Al Adolf Al Berenger Day. Whereas on November 16th, 2022, the Vallejo City Unified School District Board of Education voted overwhelmingly to rename the Vallejo Regional Education Center as the Vallejo Adult School at Al Berenger Education Center. And the naming ceremony will be held on April 22nd, 2023 at 1 p.m. at 436 Del Sur Street in Vallejo and Whereas on August 6, 1929, Adolf Al Berenger was born to Manuel Berenger and Filomeno Gonzalez in, I'm going to mess this up, um, Zamboanga. Do I have that right? Zamboanga, uh, Philippines. Am I good? Okay. And he um, completed his secondary education at Ateneo de Zamboanga as an honor student. And he then studied humanities and, lit and languages at the Jesuit Order of the Sacred Heart Novi Novitiate in Quezon City. And he earned a bachelor's degree in Spanish from San Juan de Letran College in Manila, where he later taught. And whereas in 1957, Al migrated to the United States, was a sought-after subject matter expert in the, on the Philippine education system and youth while completing his master's degree in counseling and guidance in 1960 at the California State University, San Francisco. And then was recruited by the Pittsburgh Unified School District to teach speech and debate at Hillview, Hillview Junior High, where his coaching and mentoring immensely helped his students win several oratorical contests and debates. And whereas in 1964, Al started teaching for the VCUSD, first at Franklin Junior High, where he taught Spanish, instituted book drives for students, pioneered the Philippine language program while creating multicultural events, and then at Vallejo Junior High to teach English, where he helped develop a humanities-oriented language curriculum for eighth graders in all Vallejo schools. And he also worked several summers teaching the University of California Berkeley's Upward Bound program, partnership for low income and for first generation college youth. And whereas, and we're, bear with me, we're just in 1967. Um, whereas in 1967, Al was awarded the National Defense Scholarship to study Mexican history, civilization, and culture at Universidad de Puebla de Mexico City, Mexico, Mexico and then came back to VCUSD while also becoming an adjunct faculty member at Solano Junior College, now Solano Community College, where he taught evening part-time classes in English and pioneered the first Tagalog class, which continues to be transferable foreign language to four-year colleges and universities. And whereas Al retired after 30-plus years of full-time teaching in the VCUSD, 
but his love of teaching while making a profound difference in the lives of adult students and military veterans compelled him to teach part-time as an English second English as a second language educator at the Vallejo Regional Education Center where he remained until his passing in 2018. Whereas Al was a dedicated VCUSD teacher as well as an activist, an advocate to uplift and strengthen the marginalized and underserved communities as evidenced by his decades of volunteerism, serving as a president, board of director, or member of the Filipino community of Solano County Incorporated, Solano County Library, Filipino American Progressive Organization, which he co-founded, Filipino American Catholic Club, Filipino Catholic Society, Friends of Vallejo Public Library, Vallejo Beautification Commission, St. Catherine and St. Basil Churches, Filipino Curcio, Carmelite Third Order, Vallejo Teachers Association, Kairos Prison Ministry, and whereas Al was also an award-winning poet and a member of the famous Poets Honor Society of America. And in 2002, his poem, Where Can I Find Peace, won a gold medallion of excellence in poetry and a Shakespearean trophy in Orlando, Florida. And in 2007, he was awarded the, the, po the Poetry Gold Medal of Excellence in Reno, Nevada, as his poem, America, My Heart Leaps Up, won a gold medal, a certificate of excellence in poetry, and is featured in the famous Poets Anthology. And Al also won first and second place awards in haikus at the Solano County Fair, and his first book, Untamed Wind, a compilation of his poems, was published in 2009, while his second book, Embers of the Wetland, published in 2015, highlighted Al's childhood memories of adversities and resiliency. Whereas in 2018, Al was recognized by the California State Senator Bill Dodd and Assemblymember Timothy Grayson as the oldest educator, 88 years old, having taught for 57 years. And he also received certificates of appreciation from his former students for unconditionally sharing the talents and blessings that God gave you, your life values, work ethic, consistency, compassion, forgiveness, and patience. And Al sadly passed away on April 8, 2018, and is survived, was survived by his wife, Marie Ramos Berenger, who passed in 2019, and is survived by his three children, Yvonne, Teresa, and Ignatius, along with numerous grandchildren and relatives. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the VCUSD Board of Education do hereby declare April 22, 2023 is Adolf Al Berenger Day to recognize his 57 passionate years of teaching and for his immense contributions in improving the quality of life of his students and for his boundless activism and advocacy for the marginalized and underserved communities. And we encourage everyone to acknowledge Al by attending the naming of the Vallejo, the renaming of the Vallejo Regional Educational Center as the Vallejo Adult School at Al Berenger Education Center on April 22nd, 2023, at 1 p.m. at 436 Del Sur Street, Vallejo. Do I have a motion to adopt this resolution? Trustee Young. Trustee Amboy. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Trustee Amboy. Aye. Trustee Flores. Aye. Trustee Fox. Aye. Vice President Young. Aye. President Gardner. Aye. Trustee Taylor. Aye. We have adopted this resolution, 4,000. April 22nd, 2023 is Adolf Al Berenger Day. Thank you. Okay, down to member's resolution by the Honorable Bill Dodd, 3rd Senatorial District, and the Honorable Lori D. Wilson. Superintendent Spaulding, could you please set this up for us? <clears throat> so speaking of longtime ed and, and um, longtime valued and beloved educators, uh, we had an opportunity a little earlier this spring to honor D. Doster, um, and for the many, many years of service she has given to this district, and she doesn't stop. She's still, as a retired person, going in daily and reading to children and working with them on their reading. Um, so while we were there, there were some other things that we were doing, and Tom Barty, who represents Bill Dodd's office, said, 
oh man, you you should have told me. We would have come up with a proclamation. We wanted to have one of those big, beautiful frames with uh, a proclamation from the state senate and from the state assembly. So I see a representative tonight from uh, Lori Wilson's office. No. Oh, from Bill so, Dodds. No, so my name is Dr. Gethsemane Moss, and I am okay. a representative from Senator Bill Dodds. Bill Dodds. Oh, I thought yes. I thought you were in Lori Wilson. Sorry, no, no. goof that up. All right, no. I will turn it over to you before I make any more mistakes. Okay. So I just want to say that um, on behalf of Senator Bill Dodd, it is an honor and a privilege to be here um, to represent um, his office and provide this wonderful resolution for uh, Miss D. Doster. Um, if possible, I'd like for her to come up because I just want her to be able to see this. Um, and what, it, what this resolution is, it's one of the highest, actually one of the highest awards from the California State Senate, and it does encompass all of her accomplishments. So over 53 years working for VCUSD, 50, well, 52 year, 53 years in education, but 52 years with VCUSD, um, all of her work and her leadership. So, oh, come over here. So, <laughs> I want you to be in the front. So we just want to say thank you. Um, and I just want to read just a little bit of the resolution. You can hold it. It's kind of heavy, so be careful. Um, and I do want to say that I did have the privilege of visiting her classroom over the years, too. So um, that was definitely an honor. So now, therefore, be it resolved by Senator Bill Dodd and Assembly Member Lori D. Wilson that Dolores D. Doss, Parker Doster be commended for her exemplary record of accomplishments in the field of education, applauded for the concern and commitment she has displayed for the education of her students and extended sincere best wishes for a rewarding and gratifying retirement dated on this day, um, and this was back when you were recognized in June, um, but from the Honorable Bill Dodd, 3rd Senatorial District, and Honorable Lori D. Wilson, 11th, Sim 11th Assembly District. So congratulations and thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you for your service. <laughs> That's right, you were doing it. Oh, I know, I know, I remember. <laughs> okay. okay, back to the agenda. It's a nice break there. Congratulations. Okay, there's no one here from interagencies, I believe. Um, VEA, if someone, yes, I see him. Here he comes. Good evening, trustees, uh, superintendent. Um, so it's, it's no secret that we have so many really talented, outstanding teachers in our district and um, as I get to go around and, and uh, talk to teachers, I, I do collect stories, um, a little positives that are going on in classrooms. So here's, here's just a sampling, and some of these are, might be a month old, um, back when we were doing black history and read across America. But um, from Irene Savota, my eighth grade students cr have created multimedia essays using Google Slides. This was their Black History Month hero project. Each slide uh, has engaging text, a background that pops, and at least one eye-catching Google image that they have of their hero that they have chosen. Um, Amanda Bengarel, ben my second grade kiddos are loving reading. We celebrated Read Across America Day 
last week with our annual restaurant book tasting. And I wish I had the, the pictures to bring in to, to show you guys. It, it looked like a fancy restaurant in the classroom. She said all the tables with all the, with all the you know, um, all the plates and napkins and stuff. But instead of food, there were, just, there were books on each, which, with each kid. And they got to taste the book and read a, and give a little, um, little, little critique of the book. And it looked really cute. Um, I, I wish I could have vi actually visited that when they were doing that. Um, Erica Nurse, my second grade kiddos are loving reading. We celebrated Read Across America last week. Oh, that's a, never mind. I, that was a duplicate. Nancy Osterkamp, myself and my class have been featured in, in Book of the Week for Scholastic this last month. Uh, Sarah Caitlin, my TK kiddos had a fun day of play by imagining and then creating amazing things with boxes and random stuff after reading the book, not a box. 100% uh, engagement and focus. Um, som sometimes the most fun activities you do in your classroom, that's what the kids are really going to remember. Um, now, uh, shifting topics, um, on behalf of Captain Ortolano and the ROJ, NJROTC, uh, Jesse Bethel, he wants to invite the board and anyone listening to attend the Vallejo, Na Vallejo Navy Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps 49th Annual Awards Ceremony at Jesse Bethel High School on Monday, May 1st at 6 p.m., in the Jesse Bethel Little Theater. That's where their cadets are receiving awards from local patriotic community and veteran organizations. So he wanted me to extend that invitation to you. May 1st at 6 p.m. So, thank you. Do we have anyone here from CSEA? Yes. Hello, I'm board members in Vallejo community. Uh, my name is Nina Martinez. I am a Credentials technician currently. I've been working for the district for seven years um, in human resources. I started as Dr. Patrick's staff secretary, moved into admin assistant. I actually helped some of you on board, so that's great. Um, you know, a little bit nerve wracking, but hi again. Um, uh, we are, well, I'm a part of the e board, I'm the secretary, as I probably stated. A little nervous but um, things when I came here I really didn't know what to expect this is probably like my second board meeting um, but I do watch you guys on YouTube sometimes when the kids are not running around but um, this was actually a really good experience for me just to be able to see the different celebrations for the different classifications we just celebrated Hassani for the Niners Award which was awesome classified yeah yes and then we got Ms. Doster. I actually helped her become a volunteer and said, hey, you know you want to come back to sub. So that was also awesome. Um, we want to thank you for that, being able to honor the classified members and let them know, you know, we see you, we hear you. We do have an event coming up for our CSEA members. We just wanted to let everybody know that we are going to be honoring two of our e-board members, Adelia Maxwell and Kat Tejan, um, for being recognized for just doing, going above and beyond for our members this last couple of, this last year. Um, as you know, Kat stepped in to be the president when Mike Higgins had to step down, but she's been pushing and rallying the troops and trying to fill the board seats. Um, just being able to be a part of that, I've only been in CSCA for a year, and just being able to see what she has done, that was inspiring. Adelia Maxwell is actually one of my close friends so being able to see her fight for the members and do everything that she's been doing as the un chief union 
excuse me, Stuart, was also very um, inspiring. I've been a, to several of the trainings, so just know that CSEA is doing their best to let us know what we're supposed to be doing and what we're not supposed to be doing. So we're here to represent, and we definitely appreciate you guys letting us be heard and our voices be heard. Let me make sure I am saying everything that I was supposed to say because I definitely went off script for a second. Um, classified Week is coming up uh, May 22nd through the 26th, and we will be trying to celebrate a little bit more um, as we wrap this year up and end on a high note. So thank you for allowing me to speak, and um, have a good night. Thank you. And Vallejo Managers, VSMA, do I have anyone here? Okay, reports of district advisory committees? No. Okay. Community members, I have... Yeah, I have one from Wendell Quigley. Good evening, Mr. Paulding and trustees. First, it is so exciting to sit here and listen to everything that's going on. We've got so much happening in Vallejo, the adult schools and the kids and everything that's happening. Vallejo should be very proud. School boys should be very proud of everything that's happening and the commitment of the local people. It, I mean, it's, it's incredible. And I, and I truly appreciate it, and I'm inspired by you uh, and listening to everyone who talked. I'm here on another little venture, I might say. I'm uh, speaking as a citizen, not as GVRD, but I want you to know that I am on the GVRD board. We're trying to get the Franklin School, and we would like to get it... Um, fixed so that we can turn it into a sports center. The last sports center we had was here on Mare Island uh, five years ago, and when the new company took over, they deemed the building inhabitable and closed it. So since then, we've been looking for something, and Franklin School came up. I want to thank John. John has been a real inspiration to me. He's been truly... Um, He's been so helpful in so many ways, helping me down paths to try to get this accomplished. GVRD uh, right now would um, is trying to get an inspection, and there's some um, holdups on um, who has to grant this. And um, his name is Mitch, who talks with our GVRD um, GM Gabriel um, about the board here needs to authorize GVRD to do an inspection on Franklin School and I'm hoping if I'm not sure why but that's what they're telling me so I would like to get us on the agenda your next meeting so if you have to vote on this to allow GVRD to come in, which we will, GVRD will take care of, no cost to the school. We just need to go in. We need to check out the ADA compliances, the, the um, bathrooms, the roofs, the, the windows, the um, grounds around the school, the fences. Um, so if we could get this, we could get our staff in there to see what kind of financial uh, problems could come in to the cost. So um, I urge you to vote on this uh, at your next meeting and give us the okay to go in and um, actually do the inspections, get them done, get them over, because we would love to get this June time. As well. time oh, I'm is sorry. Up. Okay, now we have our student reports.
So tonight we'll have a little bit more um, <clears throat> for our student reports. Uh, typically, Trustee Taylor uh, will give us information on what's going on at the school sites, and I know he plans on, on doing that. We talked earlier this afternoon. Um, but the other thing that I, I know the board was really interested in and, um, and, and made some investment in was to send some of our students um, with the city um, to Washington, D.C. On, on a trip that was um, kind of initially a, a League of California Cities, and there was still a little bit of that, I think, in this, in this trip, but really that opportunity for students um, to go see um, just really kind of like the sacred places of our democracy, I guess is probably the way I would want to put it. So we've, we've had a really good, um, really exciting uh, presentation a little bit earlier at a 2 plus 2 a few weeks ago, and, and this is going to echo some of what was, what was there for, for those who were at the 2 plus 2. But I came away from that 2 plus 2 meeting so impressed with first who we had, who we had sent, um, amazing students. And, and the fact that without any prompting, they just went to the places, um, you know, there was on the schedule. And I went to many of those same places last July. And I tried to take a democratic, small d, a democratic pilgrimage um, to, to cities of, uh, you know, Washington, Boston, other places, because I'm, I'm a history person. And, and to hear our students talk about uh, Lincoln Memorial, uh, National Archives, you know, Congress, the Rotunda, with the same reverence that I feel, um, just having been there, and that that was very moving to me. So, anyways, I'm, I'll have you, Trustee uh, Taylor, take it away. All righty, everybody. Uh, hope you're all doing fine. First, I just want to give a couple um, some information at my school. Uh, so, first up, the. Uh, Science department has began their sexual health unit for all of our biology students, focusing on healthy relationships and and uh, the choices that affect us when we have those type of uh, dealings for the next three weeks. Um, I've heard some very, very uh, great uh, feedback about that. Um, I've heard that it's very uh, like informative one of my friends said that they didn't know that that a condom has an expiration date. So I think it's it's really helping us out in a lot of ways. Um, I know you've heard some stuff about uh, the prom uh, situation. So originally there was supposed to be a yacht and the yacht was supposed to uh, set sail, but the yacht can't, uh, leave the dock if there's over 330 students, I believe. So the new plan is to have the yacht uh, stay in port, but have the rest of the students that were in line, have them come so, so they can all have the inclusion for the prom. Um, oh. Um, well, if you notice uh, this this meeting, I'm not in my usual uh, dress shirt. I'm in my Vallejo shirt that uh, Miss Dilly got me. I'm gonna show that off. Here. Um, the Washington D.C. trip was one of the best experiences that I've that I've ever had in my life. Um, I'm gonna share my favorite experience, which was the African American History Museum. I got to see, oh my, oh my Lord, from slave ships in Africa, uh, slavery in America, Jim Crow segregation, Reconstruction, and then to modern history and how we're still, we're still being, we're being affected by problems that we had 40, 50 years ago. Um, another thing that really, that that this trip did. This trip, uh, like it gave me a newfound love for my city. Um, when you're just here and you've only seen Vallejo, it's only like you see graffiti, you see guns, you see trash, and it's like, is this my life? Like, is this all I have to live for? But when you go outside, then you see that a city isn't supposed to have uh, litter in the streets. A city isn't supposed to have graffiti everywhere. A city is not supposed to live in fear of somebody walking down the street and uh, shooting you for no reason. So I think that 
this trip is great for everybody, just so we all have a, have a funded way of seeing the whole world and what is out there for us. Um, I see my two buds. They're standing there with Miss, with Miss Dilly, and I'm going to hand this over to you guys. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Jesslyn Tan, and I attend Vallejo High School. And I'd like to discuss this on a more personal level. So as a 17-year-old, I was plunged into an environment I'm only used to hearing about on the news and social media. So during that trip, I was able to discover things about myself I wouldn't have otherwise. And with more trips like this, that offer this level of exposure for students like myself, I can confidently say that we will see a shift in our community. And therefore, we should have more. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Julio Cesar Vasquez de Leon. And I will be kind of taking a more overview and then going kind of specific and personal. So some of the highlights of the trip that I found most inspiring would be stuff like the Rotunda or uh, the National Archives, just getting to see documents such as the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, the founding documents of this nation kind of take you into sort of a deeper, more complex understanding and you feel the sense of pride and joy to be part of this nation and no words can truly encompass what you feel when you look at the Declaration of Independence. You just get lost in reading it. And even though it's faded and you can hardly make out what it really says, you just know the importance of the document. So you just get lost and sort of entranced by, I would say, its beauty. Going more personally, I would say what I personally took away from the trip was the understanding that as a youth delegate for the city of Vallejo, it is my responsibility and also the responsibility of my fellow youth delegates to get our peers and contemporaries more involved in politics and to get them to understand the importance of issues and to kind of engage them more in the dilemmas that this nation is facing because we share the experiences that none of you really share. Uh, for example, if Mr. Superintendent were to go to Jesse Bethel High School and give a speech about, oh, get involved in politics, X, Y, Z. Would Some students really wouldn't listen, but if you take someone such as us that share their experiences, that come from the same community, they will be more engaged, they will be more open to a discussion, and they will really listen to what we have to say. So trips like this really open up the youth to be more engaged in politics and the affairs of the, not only the city, but also the nation. So that is what I personally took away from this trip. Thank you. I'm just gonna add a little bit. You would be so proud of these students. They are amazing. They worked a room of mayors and city leaders. You would think that they were city leaders. I mean, they are city. They are our city leaders. They are future city leaders. They left with business cards. They shook hands. They were in intense conversations. You would not believe that these were high school students. I was so. We were so so impressed. Um, we had some incidental, accidental, amazing things happen. Ben Crump. We were actually. I was in the elevator with him, and then uh, he ended up taking pictures with the students in the hallway, and it was really awesome. Um, the students represented themselves very well everywhere they went, whether it was assembly members uh, at Garamendi's office with his representatives, um, and even with our lobbyist. They interviewed our city lobbyist, and you would think that they were like the city officials, like really holding a business meeting. Um, and then they came back and followed up with our um, assistant city manager, with questions, with questions. So this was this was more than a government econ trip. This was this was a reality. Like this is my city, and they took ownership. They took ownership of the city, and they came back with those great questions and the follow up. And it doesn't even end there. We have a field trip um, scheduled 
on May 17th to the legislative day in Sacramento. The students are going to go and we're going to bring some other students as well. So I'm just, be proud. Be very proud, money well spent. And these kids, these students are future leaders. They want to lead in this community. And this is what the trip was all about. So thank you. Do you have questions for the students? Trustee Fox. Um, mine's not a question. Mine, um, this is my second hearing of this. I met um, some of you last week at the two by two. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to also elaborate that um, something that really struck with me is, or stuck with me, is that I remember Julio, you said you were talking with one um, politician person and they weren't really giving you answers. They were kind of going around and around and giving you nice answers, but not an answer, just nice talk. And I remember you saying something about that you wanted the real, you wanted the answers, you wanted the real answers, get to the point, something to that effect. I was very impressed with that, that let's get direct, I want answers, I don't want fluff. And then the other thing that really struck with me is um, the networking, talking about that now you and others have other peers your age across this country that you connected with that you can maybe eventually see where they are, where you are, but stay connected on issues that you are concerned about in your age group and how that's happening across our nation where these different networking peers now they live. So I th I'm very excited about that. When I was a kid, it was called, um, what was it called? Right, um, you would write letters to, maybe if you had a pen pal or something from far, far, far away, you would draw them a picture and you write a letter and it would take forever to mail the letter and forever maybe to get a response back, but I'm showing my age. Um, but that was the old day. Now these days you can text someone right away. Did you see what was on the news tonight? Did you see, what are you guys doing back there? What can we do? So it's instant today how you can respond or react. Um, and then the third point is um, this, this Victoria Grace, which also incredible, both of you. Thank you so much. One thing that I brought up months ago when we were trying to get this going and that I've asked before is there's so many organizations in Vallejo and you all that are sitting in the audience that know maybe through a church or through a club or through some interest that hopefully next year we can get lots of donations, contact Victoria Grace, and that anyone that wants to sponsor or help sponsor or make a donation, we need to start now. So we don't just send three or four, um, we can send a lot more students that can have this opportunity and then as you said, we'll promote not just government or citizenship, but also how the future of Vallejo is gonna be because you will be the one in charge of Vallejo when we're getting older and older. But um, so, Please get the word out how great this program is, and let's find ways to get sponsors throughout our great city or beyond so that we can promote and send a lot of students in the upcoming years. Um, and thank you very much for your presentation. Trustee Young. I am so proud that you guys got the opportunity. Thank you for that. Definitely, a, it was definitely a journey. Um, it's one that you probably never experience again. But in saying all that, you are our future. You know, and, and we're teaching you well because if you can go into an environment that are adults and not feel threatened, hey, my hat goes off to you. Because sometimes I feel threatened going into an environment that I'm not sure of. But one thing I always remember in my head is that I am somebody, okay? And I do represent Vallejo and, and my family, my foundations. So therefore, it takes me a little bit further into that, that, that position that you guys were put into. You'll never get that, that's a once in a lifetime thing. And um, to emerge yourself in it and not feel threatened, hey, that's a one up on you. Um, Seeing you and all that were involved, I'm going to keep hope alive. Thank you. Trustee Amboy. 
First of all, I would definitely want to commend you for for taking the opportunity to go to Washington. Um, I know my daughter, Jalen, she she did attend the League of Cities um, um, that conference um, years ago with uh, Dr. Kusi and um, uh, Principal Lubin um, at the time. Um, I know from her experience what it meant to her, and I know how this experience that that you went went through that you all went through, um, you can grow on that. And please use us as a resource as well, and lean on us. If you see something, please come to us, the board. Um, and we're, our door is open to you, and we want to see you grow. And we are so proud of you. And um, and also Victoria, considering everything that happened, how everything kind of fell apart. How you put this all together in, in such a quick moment and we I have to thank you for that yes. because these kids would not experience that the Washington in itself without you um, I would love to see this program grow a little bit further not just sm a small delegate I mean when I was your age we had a, a we, we had an entire our entire senior class went to Washington DC Eighth grade, my the entire eighth grade class went to sac, um, to to the state capitol. Um, I would like to see the, this program be, be expanded. Um, I think it's something that it, it can be done with your input. Hopefully, you know we're sowing the seeds, and we want to watch it grow. Thank you, Trustee Flores. I just want to say uh, congratulations to all the students that, that went out there and everyone that put this together. It's kind of echoing what uh, Tracy Amboy said in regards to the possibility that the students weren't going to allow to have this trip and for them to do it and for them to come back with that experience. That, that's great. And I really just want to reflect on something that uh, Tracy Taylor said in regards to getting out of our comfort zone, getting out of what we're used to, getting out of our little bubble and, and seeing the world and, and everything that can be possible for us as uh, as individuals and, and for you as the, the young scholars, you know, I think that being able to see everything that the world has to offer is, is a great experience and I'm glad you guys were able to make the most of it. So thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, and I want to say that if I know you guys, I know you guys, and I know that what you can do, and you, you show me every time I hear you talk, all three of you, um, and if the rest of the delegation nationwide is as sharp as the three of you and your other counterpart that is not here, I feel as if the country is in really good hands, and that makes me feel really good because we, we're experiencing a lot of turmoil right now, but I see the future, and I see you guys in the future, and that warms my heart. So thank you very much. I'm so proud of all of you. Okay. I just want to ask, in knowing that we need to rewrite our story, getting Vallejo back, making Vallejo strong again, I'd like to make sure that you guys highlight these students in some sort of way, highlight what they've done, highlight their efforts, because we have to write our own narrative. We don't want Benicia writing it. We don't need American Canyon telling us what we do. We need to say what we do. We have excellent students who represented us on a national level, and that story needs to be put out there. They need to know that we produced excellent grade A students. So. My charge to the board is to make sure their story is told, please. Thank you. We're on it. Thank you. The president right there. That's right. <laughs> Governor right here. Yeah. We're trying to figure out right here. <laughs> okay. All right, we're down to consent items. Move this agenda along here. Trustee Fox. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent items, uh, consent A through um, L. 
Trustee Amboy? I second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Roll call, please. Trustee Amboy? Aye. Trustee Flores? Aye. Trustee Fox? Aye. Vice President Young? Aye. President Gardner? Aye. Trustee Taylor? Aye. Okay, it passes. <clears throat> Okay, action items, none, no action items. Information item study. Okay, third quarter report on the Williams settlement. This is pretty routine. Once a quarter, we hear from Mr. Santos, Dr. Santos. Yes, uh, good, good evening, uh, Board of Trustees and Superintendents Pauling. I am definitely here to provide you with a third quarter report um, related to the Williams complaint procedures from the periods of January 1st, 2023 um, to March um, 31st, 2023. And um, educational code requires the school district um, to report and address deficiencies um, surrounding um, sufficiency of instructional materials, teacher misassignments and vacancies, emergencies or urgent facilities conditions that pose a threat and safety to students or staff, uh, preschool health and safety reasons. Um, Williams reports are given, um, as you described, uh, four times um, per year. Um, during the third quarter, there were two facilities issues that were um, individually raised by staff members at both Jesse Bethel High School and um, Hogan Middle School. Um, for the Jesse Bethel High School situation, um, the uh, matter dealt with a locker issue. Um, a work order was created, submitted to district staff. Um, all repairs have been completed. And uh, for the Hogan Middle School situation, um, the matter had to do with a broken um, classroom door. Um, same process, a work order was submitted uh, for door lock repair. A um, district um, locksmith um, ordered the necessary parts and um, eventually referred the situation. And uh, the um, project was completed on, on March 27, 2023. So that is the um, report for this um, third quarter. Thank you. No questions. Okay, Mr. Romeo. Results of the Measure S series sale, right? A little presentation here. I want to know how our bond's doing here. Well, we sold the dollar seventy-two cents worth of bonds, and we're very pleased. <laughs> so the board authorized a sale on February fifteenth, and we had quite a successful sale um, just a few weeks ago. Um, and so tonight we have Keith Weaver, Director of Services. At Government Financial Services JPA here this evening to to share the results of that sale. Hi, good evening. Thanks so much for having me here tonight. As Mitch said, we do think this was a very successful bond sale, and so we wanted to share some of that success with you tonight as well. So um, just quickly by way of review, uh, Measure S was our $194 million bond measure that was approved by our voters in 2018, and that helps fund our facilities program. Uh, this year, fiscal year, we were on our third round of bonds of $52 million, and that was our plan that I shared with you back in February, and so tonight, just sharing with you how everything turned out. Um, so I'll share with you a little bit about the process and then talk about the results. So in terms of process, we do like to incorporate a lot of best practices. We really encourage industry best practices be incorporated into the bond sale. We try to in include as many as we can. And those best practices center around encouraging competition and trying to help minimize costs so that we get the best uh, value for our taxpayers and for our facilities program. Um, we did go through a credit rating process. And so our uh, financials were evaluated by one of the main credit rating agencies, which was, in this case, Moody's Investor Service. And they gave us an A1 credit rating, which is uh, quite a high credit rating. And um, we were very happy with that, very pleased to see that. And some of the reasons included our district's uh, positioning within the Bay Area, as well as our strong financial position, as reflected in our, in our budget situation. Um, so we definitely want to maintain a very healthy budget and make sure that we stay balanced because it's been great uh, for our, our, our bond program. Um, so in terms of process, we had a competitive sale. That was on March 16th, uh, 8.45 AM. And uh, we did an internet platform to try and encourage as much competition as possible the goal of getting the best results. Um, so we had some, some really big headlines and, uh, coming into our bond sale. Uh, the Friday before 
we went to, we had our sale, the uh, Silicon Valley Bank hit the news and uh, caused some turmoil in the markets. I'm sure you've heard about that. Um, the day before our bond sale, we had Credit Suisse hit the news, and you may have heard. They went under. They were eventually bought by uh, UBS, the Union Bank of, of Switzerland. And so uh, we were hearing about all these stories, all this turmoil in the marketplace, these banks going under. And uh, the morning of, we were wondering, wow, you know, are we going to get any bids on our bonds, right? There's all this turmoil happening in the marketplace. Are banks going to want to bid? Um, so what did we do? We hit the phones. Uh, we talked, you know, our team included conversations with the superintendent, the assistant superintendent of operations, uh, the CBO. Uh, we went around and talked to all of these banks. You know, hey, are you guys going to submit a bid? We're hearing about, about these headlines. What's going on? And so uh, as the time was approaching, we thought, you know what, we're going to go for it. You know, we were hearing enough confidence that there was enough banks uh, still wanting to join us in the bond sale that we decided to, uh, to carry on and, and see how it turned out. Now, on the positive side, the interest rates, um, so this is an interest rate index I'm sharing with you throughout the beginning of, of Measure S. And if you look to the far right on the recent time, uh, interest rates were trending up. And then when the bank stories hit, they sort of U-turned and went down, which was nice for us because the lower interest rate means a lower cost of, of funds. And so this actually had a, a positive in the marketplace when it came to interest rates, which was great. Um, so we carried on with our bond sale, 8.45 a.m. We ended up getting half a dozen bids. Uh, which was really, really nice to see. We weren't uh, expecting that much, especially given all the, new, the news headlines, hearing about the banks that were having problems. Um, but we had half a dozen bids uh, from around, around the nation, and it was a nice mix. We had some really big players like Wells Fargo Bank, uh, Morgan Stanley is a big investment bank. We also had a lot of small players that um, you may not have heard of, uh, Mesero, uh, Key Bank Cap Capital Markets, Robert Baird. Um, so really nice mix of bidders, both large and small. Uh, joined us in, in this process, which was nice. And then financially, um, you can see the results here. So our low cost bidder was Morgan Stanley. They gave us a bit of about four and a quarter percent on our interest rate, which was really nice. We were budgeting uh, five and a quarter because we were anticipating or at least uh, budgeting for interest rates to go up. And instead they turned around and went down. So a uh, really good result here, four and a quarter percent. Um, you can see the last place bidder bid about four and a half. And it was about a million and a half dollars difference in interest cost. So some really nice savings uh, amongst our bidders to really get the lowest cost possible. And then on the facilities program, so uh, we were planning to do 52 million, and that's what we did. Um, our costs, which are shown in blue here, um, overall our costs came in less than what we budgeted for, which was great. And then we also see, received a premium which is basically the bank submitting, um, in this case, was submitting about a million dollars over and above the 52 million. And state law requires that goes into the tax collection fund. And so that million dollars will benefit our taxpayers, which is good and kind of help keep our taxes low. And then for the facilities program, we ended up uh, getting uh, just over 51 million and had budgeted um, about 50.95. So we got about $150,000 more in our facilities program than what we anticipated. And that was really just a result of getting lower costs and um, the competition amongst the bidders, which was, which was really nice. And then for our taxpayers, um, so these bonds are paid back through our, our taxpayers. And uh, when we went out to the voters to ask for authorization, the tax levy uh, was estimated a maximum of about $60 uh, per 100,000 assessed valuation. And currently we're at $47. And we estimate going forward that we'll be right around the same range, 47 to $48. So we expect to be uh, having a very stable tax levy and one that's, that's quite a bit below uh, what was communicated to voters at the time of the election. So we feel like we're, we're honoring our, our commitment to our taxpayers. Um, so in terms of next steps, uh, you know, congratulations. We viewed it as a big success, especially given all of the turmoil in the marketplace. We thought the, uh, the results were outstanding. Uh, we ended up getting more facilities funds and at less cost than what we've been planning for. So it was really nice. Um, so the funds were received on March 30th. Uh, they're ready to spend, um, and we can carry on with our uh, facilities program. And then we have our final round of Measure S bonds, uh, 51 million, that is planned for late in fiscal year 24, 25. So about two years out. Um, so in the meantime, we'll uh, carry on with our, our spending, uh, making sure that our facilities projects are, are going. And then our final round will be in about another two years or so. Um, so thank you.
and uh, happy to, uh, to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. So, do we have any questions from the desk? No. no. Okay, very good. Thank you again. Thank you. CSBA, Policy and Administrative Regulation Updates. Ms. Loza, oh, no, Ms. Cheney. Um, good evening, Governing Board. And I know we just a couple of months ago had a policy update, but periodically we go back and audit our policies to make sure that we have included all the CSBA updates and due to a conversation that we had with special ed we noticed that we skipped the October 2020 and so we're bringing the October 2020 updates for your review so we went through the policies that may and only brought those that have not been superseded in subsequent um, updates okay just as a reminder, too, to the board that this comes this time, remember that when we do board policy um, updates, it comes in, in two trips. Uh, the first one is the presentation, as Ms. Cheney just gave to you, and uh, so that's the information item. It comes the next time, um, typically as a consent item, and that's where you act on it. So you have a, you know, a couple of, of looks at this before you, you act. So it's informational, and once it's approved, we've been working very hard with the superintendent's office to have those policies immediately updated on the web page. Okay, any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. <clears throat> Ms. Loza, 21-22 audit report. Good evening again. I take the pride and privilege to introduce our partner from E. Bailey, who will present, I have to think a minute which year we're in. This is the 21-22 audit report to the governing board of Vallejo. Chopin. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good evening. Um, the purpose of the audit is to render an opinion about whether or not the financial statements were fairly stated. Uh, with uh, material effect. The audit was conducted in accordance with government auditing standards. The procedures include sampling and non-sampling methods and based on risk assessments. We selected transactions and, uh, from the general ledger and verified amounts against supporting documents and reconciliations in order to conclude our results. Based on the audit, we have issued an unmodified opinion that is a clean opinion, meaning that uh, the district's financial statements for June 30, uh, June 30, 2022 were fairly stated. The audit also includes a federal and state programs. Um, there are a list of the uh, findings and recommendations the, in the back of the uh, audit report. Uh, one of the recommendations is about reconciliation of uh, accounts, account balances. The other, the other one is related to audit adjustments um, for charter school apportionment and as well as uh, loans uh, related to state loan. And I think we're going to reevaluate those uh, in this 22-23 uh, audits. Um, there are also some state compliance uh, recommendations. One of them is related to independent study program where one student did not have the required written uh, statement on file. Uh, the second one is related to unduplicated local control funding formula where a student listed as English learner did not have the supporting documents on file. And the third one is related to state to school accountability report card where we were not able to obtain the appropriate facility inspection tool that was used to prepare the uh, report cards. This concludes my presentation. I'm happy to take questions you may have.
Any questions? No questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Trustee Gardner, I was going to ask <clears throat> if we could table item E um, until the next meeting. Um, it was misposted as an information item is, in fact, an action item. So we'll be bringing that back to the very next meeting for, for action. Do we need a, we need a motion, don't we? To table? I believe so, yes. yes. I'll move to table the item. Need a second? Trustee Amboy. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Roll call. Trustee Amboy. Aye. Trustee Flores. Aye. Trustee Fox. Aye. Vice President Young. Aye. President Gardner. Aye. Trustee Taylor is absent. Okay, it's tabled until the next round. Down to reports, Superintendent. What do you have for us this evening? I'll keep mine really short because I learned from um, Deborah Keys Wright, um, uh, talk less, smile more um, from the last uh, time. So uh, just a couple things. Um, so we are well into the sprint to the end of the, of the school year. And we've had a lot of conversations around the district and a lot of conversations with our leadership the other day about the importance of attendance and getting those numbers way up, uh, getting numbers to 95% and getting um, CASP uh, testing up to 95%. And so we did a little video, and I don't know if I've said, shared it with you, but we talked about, I'm, I'm doing hashtags now, I shouldn't do that. But um, we talk about hashtag, show what you know. We want our kids to show what they know. Uh, we've also done a hashtag, um, be there or be here. Um, so we're trying to get the message out to, to the employees and to our kids how important it is to be here every single day between now and the end of the school year, how important it is to take these tests seriously, how important it is to take attendance seriously, um, and then just to be ready to, to make this sprint. It's going to go very, very quickly from here on out. Um, I've also been able to get out to classes a little bit more than, than I have in the past, and that was really going well until Yolo County Superior Court called me into jury duty this week. So, um, so some places I was hoping to visit, I haven't been able to visit. But my goal is to continue um, spending more time in classes. And it's always a really happy place. Thank you. That's my report for tonight. Thank you. Maybe we'll have a record. Brevity tonight is the theme. Being brief. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I'll model this, right? OK, for my report, I attended the 2 plus 2 meeting. And on that agenda, we actually heard from the students that went to Washington, D.C. Um, and it was a much broader uh, presentation from Julio. It, I, I'm just really awed with the, the quality of the students that we sent. I'm awed with the quality of the students I see that come before us. Um, it, was a, it was a very good presentation. I think that everyone learned something from them. We also had a grant writing overview. Um, the grant consultant for the city was there with another woman um, who talked about how they write the grants or actually how they look for grants. And they promised to start sending us a copy of the grants that were had anything to do with the school district or schools or the, the combination of the schools and the city. So I expect that we should be receiving copies of those um, emails shortly. Another item on the agenda was the Nebraska street closure. We had an uh, individual from the, um, an engineer from the traffic division, I believe. And he talked about, you know, what it would take to close uh, Nebraska street based on um, that information. I think we're going to continue that discussion um, and see, maybe we maybe not close it, maybe close it during. Anyway, we're going to continue that discussion. Um, and one model that we always close that street for graduation, I think we're going to take a look at the manpower needed in order to do that and the dollar amount that would take. And that's pretty much my report for, I'll let John add things, to, or Trustee Fox add to that. 
that agenda item. I also um, had an opportunity to go to an event through the Labor Council, and we watched uh, Dr. Ubaldi receive an award from the third award. What was the title of that award? It was, right, he was only the third person. Congre Legislative Legacy Award right. from Le Congressman um, yes. Mike Thompson. Mike Thompson. Mike Thompson actually was the first recipient of that, and then Garamendi and Dr. Ubaldi is the third recipient of that award, so it was kind of a big deal. And also watch Laura Dutch receive a, an award for the amazing things that she's done with the adult school and the Construction Academy. So that is the conclusion of my report. I will pass it on now to uh, Dr. Young. I also, I also got the opportunity to go to that wonderful event. It was like going onto a set in um, a uh, Hollywood. I never knew that was there, and I am a native Vallejoan. Um, it was amazing uh, to be there in that spirit. Um, it was an amazing event, and. Um, Laura and uh, Dr. Yabaldi were well represented. Okay, for my report, I'm going to continue with um, the two by two that President Gardner um, started. Um, one of the first things, um, there was a woman, Annie, from the Air, Monitor Air Monitoring Network, and uh, she was talking about planting trees here in Vallejo or hopefully in our schools maybe, um, environmental justice projects, and I brought up a question asking, in the past we used to have these air monitoring boxes throughout Vallejo, and the students used to be able to um, incorporate that in their science classes, how to read these devices. So that's a um, thing she's going to look into and get back to us on. Um, for the grant writing, there was um, also, that if we get key words or key ideas, we can submit them to either Mr. Wilson or Ms. Shelley Locker to um, look into any of those type of ideas or key words. There was a woman that came and talked about some funding for a grant for crisis response, emergency response, um, that she wants a city or such to look into. Um, there's also talk about philanthropists and Bloomberg helping with different projects. Um, for, and then onward to the Nebraska Street closure, it was interesting that just for one day they did a study for traffic and it was 4,292 trips of vehicles in one day. And I think that was on a Thursday they did it. They closed, um, they did the monitoring. Um, and as President Gardner said, it would be very challenging to close the street because of that many vehicles and do a detour would put too much traffic on one of the side streets. So two of the options that were presented that we're gonna hear more information at a future two by two meeting are perhaps maybe doing speed bumps on the street that are so much that maybe that would divert traffic because people wouldn't wanna do the large speed bumps throughout the street and to install cameras so that if there's visible cameras and signage around that might prevent people from hanging out or wanting to know they will get on camera if they are going to try to come in to do unlawful items. Um, oh, let's see. I think that was... And then again, we heard from the same students, so I won't repeat that. It was wonderful. Uh, then also... Um, the CSBA County... Um, the County School Board Association, we tried to meet last Monday, but there was technical difficulties. Some were able to, some of our members are taking over the technology and the secretary are still trying to find their way. So us board members are trying to support them, but we will, Dr. Young and I will keep helping and we will try to have a report on what's going on with the county, hopefully in the next meeting or two. Um, and then Deborah Crees writes, we were all here last week, and we all um, might come out, might come back from that is to ask what, not the how, the what of um, what questions. And um, I think that's it. Thank you. I have nothing to report tonight. And Trustee Flores. 
So I, uh, since the last meeting, I attended the city council meeting on the 28th. Uh, that was the meeting where they had on the agenda, we're gonna speak more on the, the buffer zone of 500 feet around schools with homeless encampments. Uh, I spoke uh, in favor of it. And unfortunately, one of the reasons why the, the council was a little hesitant to go any further with it is because there's no enforcement mechanisms as of now. So that's once there's more uh, resources to enforce it and also just as importantly, if not more importantly, to, to address where uh, the, the, the unhoused uh, citizens would, would go to if they're being asked not to be in that area. Um, we, we have to get that uh, infrastructure in place as well. So I do want to thank uh, Council Member Lo Loretta Diaz uh, for, for spearheading that. And, uh, you know, she kind of took a little bit of uh, a backlash from, from some folks in the community in regards to it. I, I really do believe that uh, the district and, and Council Member Loretta Diaz uh, did this in, in the spirit of, of, of help and compassion. So again, I just want to thank her for uh, for trying to help us out with this. Um, on the 29th, I received an invitation to go visit Vallejo Charter. Um, went there, spoke with the principal and a few other folks, um, some of the parents that, that are leaders in, at the school. Um, got a chance to, to tour the facility, got to look at their art program a couple students were doing a project uh, in re regarding the monarch butterflies. It was very cool. Uh, if you guys get a chance to go take a look at that, I I'd recommend it. And um, one of the things they brought up was the, the gym floor. So I'm glad to see that that was on the agenda. So that'll be taken care of for them. And uh, likewise, I was also here for the board governance training um, with Deborah Wright Keys and um, just glad that, that that training is being uh, afforded to us so we just become better uh, governing uh, a better governing uh, community um, as you can see I'm uh, remote again and and once again I want to thank Mike uh, Rebecca Melda for for making this very successful and, and smooth doesn't seem to be any issues with it um, doing uh, masters in governance course number three which is school financing that was today and tomorrow will be human resources and uh, collective bargaining. And I want to thank the district for allowing me to come here and, and you know, help me become a better, uh, a better trustee. So uh, with that, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Do we need a community forum? Do we have any cards? <clears throat> no cards. Closed session. We don't need a closed session. Announcement of upcoming meetings. I know we do have another board meeting next Wednesday. That would be the 26th. We may treat that as two board meetings. I think we'll, we'll probably, because one we were looking to try to make into a workshop um, and on issues regarding student services. So I think what we're going to try to do is have the regularly scheduled board meeting occur a little bit earlier, maybe like five um, and then, you know, do handle our business at that point and then have kind of a second meeting that follows up on that right afterwards in the early, you know, in the early evening to, to work on uh, the workshop. After that, um, we have kind of a convoluted schedule. I believe we have is May 9th now confirmed. May 9th is confirmed for part of our series with Deborah Keys Wright on, on governance. And then we have um, board meetings, regular board meetings on the 17th and the 31st so we're getting we're, we're a little off kilter in in may um but that's kind of how it shakes out and then and then we'll we'll be in june and we'll have at least two meetings then for the lcap so you know like i said it's going fast all the graduation activities coming up future board agenda items trustee fox um i have two items i'd like to request the first one is um what was requested for GVRD, how we can get them accom accommodated or how we can work with them to find out what inspections they need to do and how to get them access and that what, that is what the requirements are needed. 
so that we can find out at the next board meeting about all those particulars, how to par partner and get this going. The second item is, I think approximately five years ago or four years ago, the board asked about ownership of this building that we are sitting in at this moment. And I still don't know the answer, I'll come to that request. So I'm going to ask a request that what is the, what's taking so long, but what is, who owns, how, what is the documentation, what is the ownership, what's the stipulations, and how soon can we get that information to find out about this district office and our ownership as a school district. So those are my two requests for the agenda for next week. Thank you. Anyone else? Dr. Young. Um, I would like something on the agenda to start assessing like a report card of what's been uh, uh, happening in the district. Like an update? Very good words, update. Of what's so a been district update or a board mm -hmm. a district update? A district update, yes. And what we have accomplished. I mean, that hasn't been put out there yet. Um, in the community. The community needs to know that we're just not sitting up here on the dais. We're actually doing business. Okay. So I have these three down. Got those? Okay. Without any further ado, this meeting is...